Let's add a custom item to Minecraft. Minecraft modding courses with close to 100 topics ranging from custom tools and armor to custom block entities all the way to custom mobs linked in the description below. Alright, we find ourselves back in Intelligent once more and in this tutorial we're going to be adding a custom item to our fabric tutorial mod over here for 120 and this is going to be very interesting indeed. So for this, first things first, in the tutorial mod package we're going to right click new package called item and then inside of there we're going to right click new java class called the mod items class now when you create this and you make a github repository you will get this add to file over here you can simply add it the file will turn green and everything is going to be fine now the mod items class is going to be sort of a helper class which is going to register all of our items so that minecraft actually knows that we have added items to do this we're first of all going to make a register mod items method this is going to be a public static void register mod items no parameters needed and inside of the actual method in the actual method we're going to put in tutorial mod you can see where it actually starts suggesting this to us when you have one of those things selected over here in the suggestion you can hit the tab key it will auto complete the word and it will also add the import over here you can then continue dot logger this time so i put in a dot and then i can i can choose logger here and i once again hit the tab key to auto complete this and we'll call the info method once again tab to auto complete and then here i'm going to say registering mod items for and we're registering them for tutorial mod dot mod id that's just a simple output here and it's not strictly necessary however i do like to add this and the register mod items method will now be called inside of the tutorial mod class so we're going to reopen this and in the on initialize method right here we're going to say mod items dot register mod items you can see once again it suggests this to us hitting the tab key to call this returning to the mod items class we will need another helper method we will need a helper method to actually register the items. And this is going to be a private static item over here from NetMicroft item. Once again, tap to autocomplete and it will import the correct class. We're going to call this the register item method. It will take two parameters, a string name parameter, as well as an item parameter called item. This particular method will return registry, making sure this is extremely important. Pay close attention to choose NetMicroft registry. You do not want to choose Java RMI registry then you will run into an issue where you want to choose net micro registry registry. So double check if, if you get an error over here, you can check at the top here in the imports that it is net micro registry registry. If this is not the registry class you've imported, then you have imported the wrong class. You have to delete the import and import the correct class. Then once again, registry.register, we're going to pass in registries.item, tap to autocomplete, and then a comma, and then a new identifier. First parameter of which is going to be tutorial mod dot mod ID, and then second parameter is going to be the name. And then after the first closing parentheses, we're going to do a comma and then put in the item, and there you go. If at any point in this you might get an issue over here, you can always take a look at the GitHub repository linked in the description below, where all of this code is available, and you can compare it with your own code. So if you have any typos anywhere, you basically are going to find it right there. But that is the register item method, and we can now start registering our items. To add our new items, what we're going to do is we're going to make a public static final item i'm going to call this the ruby all uppercase in this case i'm going to call the register item method first parameter which is going to be a string and we'll see this name over here right this generates automatically the the name colon you don't have to type this out if you were to type this out look how this looks completely different than this i've seen this multiple times this is a thing that intellij adds don't type that out now in this string we're going to give it a name now this is going to be ruby this is the same rule that the mod id follows so it all has to be lowercase it can't be uppercase it can't contain any spaces then as a second parameter we're going to make a new item from netmicro item over here once again tap to autocomplete and inside of it we're going to make a new fabric item settings once again it suggests this to us we're going to autocomplete this and we're going to end the line with a semicolon and with this, we have successfully added an item to a Minecraft. Now, of course, it doesn't have a name and it doesn't have a texture and it's not even added into any creative mode tab. Now, luckily, we can fix this. Let's first of all tackle the creative mode tab. For this, we're going to make a new private static void. I'm going to call this the add items to ingredient tab item group. And this will take in a fabric item group entries over here. I'm going to call this entries. And inside of it, we're going to say entries.add and then just passing in Ruby. And then inside of the register mod items method, we're just going to call item group events, modify entries event, item groups dot ingredients dot register, and then mod items. And you can see it already suggests to us colon colon add items to ingredient tab item group. That's exactly right. I guess we can omit the tab here because item group basically 
is a good name. So this is going to be the add items to ingredient item group. Awesome. Any other items would be added here in this add items to ingredient item group method. And they would also be added to the ingredients tab. If you want to add something to another tab, you would just add a new method. You would call this modifies event again with a different item group from vanilla here. That's also quite important. This is the way to add items to, to vanilla item groups. We're going to see in just a moment after we've added the item, how you can also add a custom item group, but more on that later. But first, we somehow have to give our Ruby a name as well as a texture. How do we do this? Well, we're going to navigate to the resources assets tutorial mod folder, and we're going to right click and make a new directory. This is going to be called lang, spelled L-A-N-G. In the tutorial mod folder, once again, we're going to make a new directory called models. Very important that this is models, plural. And once again, in the tutorial mod folder, right-click new directory called textures. Then in the models folder, we're going to right-click new directory called item, singular this time, and similar to the textures, right-click new directory called item. This is the full assets folder directory that we're going to need. So double check that this is exactly spelled correctly for you as well. So this is going to be assets, your mod ID, lang and then we have models inside of the models folder we have an item folder and then a textures folder in which we have an item folder we're going to start with the lang folder this is needed for the translation files and inside of it we're going to right click new file called en underscore us dot json so that's the exact name of this file and this is going to well basically provide translations from keys to english this needs two curly brackets here and then we need to define the key the key is going to be item dot tutorial mod dot ruby and then we want a colon and then the name displayed in the game how does this get created well we have just created an item right we think back this is an item so we've registered an item with the name ruby this is indeed correct and it is under the tutorial mod mod id and that's how the key over here basically gets created those are all separated by a dot. And then here, this is the actual name displayed in the game. And th this can include any type of character. This can include spaces. It can include numbers or whatever you want, even Cyrillic characters. This is basically a free for all. And our item actually has a name, but it doesn't have a texture yet. So how are we going to give it a texture? We'll do this via an item model JSON file. So in the models item folder, we're going to right click new file called ruby.json. And it's extremely important that the name of this file matches the name given to the item. So once again, this name right here, Ruby, has to match exactly this name. And then it, the file has to end with .json. Now this file, I'm going to type this out and then I'm going to explain the contents. So we're going to have a parent over here. The parent is going to be item slash generated. And we're going to have textures defined. Those textures are going to be layer zero, colon, tutorial mod, colon, item slash Ruby. Now you might say to yourself, what the freak is going on here? What is all of this? No worries at all. So we can see the parent over here, item generated, basically just means that this is how we are going to display this particular item in your hand and in the inventory. So this item generated is the normal way that an item gets displayed. You've probably seen this a thousand times when you have a diamond, for example, in your hand, the 2D texture gets extruded a little bit in 3D space. And that is basically what's going to happen with our custom Ruby here as well. And then we have to define a texture over here. Now we're defining the texture called Ruby and we're going to search for it in the textures folder. So there's going to be this folder right here under the tutorial mod mod ID. So there's going to be tutorial mod textures. And then we're going to look in an item folder and we're going to look for the ruby.png. And that's how basically the contents of a normal item model JSON file are constituated. It's actually very straightforward once you know each individual element. Now, what's very important is that the code as well as the JSON files are all included in the GitHub repository. So if something doesn't work, your texture doesn't work, simply compare your JSON file to this JSON file and see if there's any discrepancies. It has to be exactly like this. It can't be parent with an uppercase P that doesn't work. It can't be parents. It can't be items with an uppercase I. I've seen all of these things make sure that this is exactly written correctly. It has to be layer zero with a lowercase l, textures with an S. All of this has to be exactly right. And then we can add the texture. This is also going to be available to you. And as you can see, this is the ruby.png instead of the item textures folder in the tutorial mod folder exactly how what we've defined here in the item model JSON file. And with this, we're actually ready to go into the game for the first time and see our custom Ruby in action. All right, finds us back in Minecraft and let's just take a look in the ingredients tab at the very bottom we should find. There it is. Our Ruby has been successfully added to the game and it looks freaking awesome. And well, that is one item, but one is none. So let's add a second one. Basically, sometimes quite a few people are confused on how you add a second item. And the, the thing is like, it's you just add a second item here. You don't have to make another more items class or anything like that. That would be crazy. You just say public 
static final item. And there's going to be a raw underscore Ruby. And this is going to be equal to the register item method once again. We're going to call this the raw underscore Ruby. And this is going to be equal to a new item with new fabric item settings. And bam, second item added. Now, once again, the same issue before is our raw Ruby. It is not added to an item group yet. So for this, we can click here, press control D to duplicate this. And then the raw Ruby over here. Then we can go into the en underscore US JSON file. We can do the same thing. Just click on this line, press control D, and then add a comma over here in between. I'm going to change this to the raw Ruby and similar here, raw Ruby for the display name. For the item model, you're going to take the item model and you're going to drag it into the same folder while holding control. This will duplicate the file and we can then rename this. We're going to call this raw underscore Ruby. I'm going to hit OK. And then the texture that it references is also going to be raw underscore Ruby. We then just have to copy over the texture over here. This is, of course, also going to be available to you and done. That is basically a second item added pretty much fairly quickly. And as you add more items, you're going to get used to this and it's going to become a breeze. But we're not quite finished with this just yet because we also want to add a custom item group. So in the item package, once again, we're going to right click new Java class and we're going to call this the mod item groups over here. This will have a public static void register item groups method, which will call tutorial mod.logger.info. And this is going to be registering item groups for tutorial mod dot mod ID and let's immediately call this we're going to call this at the very top over here so there's going to be the mod item groups that register item groups awesome and then to add the item group we just want to say public static final item group from net micro item right here ruby underscore group and this is going to be equal to registry once again making sure we choose net micro registry extremely important that register registries dot item group comma a new identifier passing in first of all tutorial mod dot mod ID and then the name Ruby. We're going to format this a little bit differently. After the first closing parentheses, we're going to do a comma and then a new line. And then we're going to call the fabric item group, the first one right here from version one, dot builder. And then we can call all sorts of method on here. The first method that we want to call is the display name. And that's going to get a text dot translatable. Instead of here, we're going to make a new string, call it item group dot Ruby. After the second closing parentheses, we want to make a new line and we're going to call it dot icon, we're going to make a supplier. Now a supplier is going to be an open and closing parentheses, and then a sort of an arrow over here with a minus and then a bigger than sign, then a new item stack. And in here, we're going to put mod items dot Ruby. After the second closing parentheses, we're going to call the entries over here. I'm going to start typing display and you can see it basically suggests the entry collector to us. We're going to hit the tab key and then we're going to make a open an open curly bracket hit enter and end this with a semicolon. And then here at the very end, not the last closing parentheses, but the one before that, you want to hit the dot build over here and then no more errors should be present. Once again, if any part of this was a little bit confusing, the code is all available to you. We're going to go through each of these means. The display name, well, that's just going to be a translatable name that we've just added here that is going to be displayed when you hover over your custom item group and we can immediately translate this. So just in the en underscore usjs file, we're going to add the key. This is the item group dot ruby. And this is going to be the Ruby tutorial group. How about that? Awesome. Now this is translated. The icon over here, that's just going to display the Ruby. And then between the curly brackets, this is where we're going to add all of our custom items. So we can say entries.add and then just say mod items.ruby. And we can duplicate this, add the raw Ruby. And there we go. Now we've added the Ruby and the raw Ruby to our custom Ruby group. And the really cool thing about this is that you can add any type of items. You can even add vanilla items to do that. We're going to say items dot, for example, diamond. And the order you add them in right here is also going to be the order that you're going to add them in the item group. Pretty freaking cool. And with this, we also have a custom item group. So let's go into the game one more time and actually take a look. All right, fans, us back in Minecraft and let's just take a look. And you can see we already have a page two over here. And that is exactly what we want to see. We have the Ruby tutorial group. We got the raw Ruby. We got the normal Ruby and we got the diamond in here. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And that is a great start to this awesome tutorial series. All right, and that actually concludes this tutorial right here. Next time, we're going to add a custom block to Minecraft. And that's going to be done in this video right here. Hope to see you there. And until next time. So, yeah.